Right, so my solar panels have turned up today. These are the Renergy 100 watt solar panels. I've used these before and I've never had any problems with them, so they're pretty good for the price. You can obviously get more expensive ones, like the blackout ones. One of the things we're looking for is to make sure when you buy solar panels, you get as many of these silver buzz bars, which I spoke about before. So on here I've got one, two, three, four, five buzz bars, which I think is the maximum I've ever seen. And these are the buzz bars that, as you can see, they come up and join up here, and these ones join on the bottom. These are the buzz bars that take the current off the cells <coughs> to your electrical wires. So the more you got, the less voltage drop and the less current resistance you have on your solar panel, so the better and more efficient they run. So that's one of the things you're looking at. Other than that, most solar panels, I think they're pretty good nowadays. Um, I've used a few and I've we usually got exactly what they say out of the panels. Right, so the first thing I've done is bolted the two frames together using quite big bolts all the way through the sides and these are nylon nuts so they shouldn't come apart or undo um, with vibration and as you can see now it's quite rigid and the whole outer frame is going to be supported on the frame that's on the band as well. Right, so one of the first things you've got to do is get this old panel off which is cutting through the Sikaflex that they've used and I'm going to use a method of putting some wire around it with some bits of wood and seeing if I can cut through it like cheese like a che cheese cutter so there you go that went through very easy I've just got to go around now do the whole of the panel and see if we can get this panel off alright so I finally got the panel off um, quite a lot of work getting this off people can come up with better ways of doing it I use the wire method which works fairly well kept breaking the wires but it's the only way I could do it if you can get one of the serrated wires that you use to camp in you probably cut through it a lot quicker and maybe even a hot wire if you could do it set up that would be better um, but yeah that's taking a few hours really to get that off some people say online about these panels coming loose and coming off on the motorways well this stuff sticks like like anything I mean it's really hard stuff to get off and it really does stick quite well Right, so this is the roof bars I've got. These are 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter aluminium T-sections bars. Um, 1.5 meters, I believe they were, um, which is standard you can buy. So I'm gonna cut these down to size to make up a framework for the solar panels to fit on. I've got some already aluminium right angle brackets to attach it to the full system that's already up there. So these come with the T-bolts, which are these. Um, so that, this can all go on. And on order at the moment, I've got the right angle set, um, right angle aluminium brackets to be able to connect the solar panels to these bars. So I'm gonna get on with measuring this one up, cut this one up, get this in place and show you what that looks like. All right, if you do buy a packet of these on eBay, which I'll put a link below, um, they come with these bolts for the T-section and these are not quite the same profile as the false bars that are on here. They're fine for these, for the proper T-set bolts, um, but the full system has different grooves on the top here. This is why though, they fit in there quite nicely, but they won't, I'll show you, they won't go into there. But they, to slide down the back here, um, I've had to grind the ends down. So it's just a little bit, it's about two mil out, on the end nut and you can then grind it down here grind it down and, and you can slide them down so you need to take this plastic cover off to do that which is just a t-bolt to be able to slide these bolts down which is the best way of doing it all right one of the other things to take into account is these bar brackets come with these little tiny metal lips which are designed to sit in the groove of your t-section which for this one is fine but again for the full system they won't fit in there properly because it's not a standard groove that they've used, so you do have to file off the ends of them so that it can fit flat like that one there. Right, so just to give you an indication of the difference in these panels. This one here is the NDS panel, 120 watt panel, which is supplied by the dealer. You can sort of see the size difference. You've got an extra over a foot in length on the NDS. It is extra 20 watts, but really, truly, 20 watts isn't a huge amount, really, for an extra foot of weight. I mean, to be honest, the length of this, I could probably get another panel 
along there instead um, with 300 watts along here and one across the top give me four um, but I don't need it anyway so it just give you an idea of the size difference of when you're buying panels you can get quite a, a huge difference in sizes and then you've got to take into account weight as well so the NDS is really heavy because of all this extra metal bar in they're putting around here um, these actually weighing at 10.5 kilograms for the 120 watts whereas these of 6.5 kilograms for the 100 watts so it's an extra four kilograms um, of weight for the extra 20 watts so it's just an idea all right so i finally finished off doing the panels you can see they're all connected up um i went for the renergy's 100 watts in the end all of them because i didn't want to use the nds purely because of the size it's quite bigger than these renergy's it went right away across both sides and it was also a couple of kilograms heavier um, so I decided to go for all of them. Another thing I've done is make up a junction box for all the connections. So they're all connected in parallel. And the reason why I've done this instead of using these, which is the MC4 connectors, is I've had these before where they, you put them together and, and the pins inside, especially this one with a little pin, um, pushes back and doesn't make a proper connection. And sometimes you can get high resistance or on my dad's one we actually had no voltage coming from one of the panels and because they're wired in parallel you never know unless you could connect unless you could test each panel individually and so by making the buzz bar um periodically every so many every year or two, so i can take this cover off and just check each panel is still working quite well it just makes it easier for maintenance as well um nothing majorly wrong with these everyone uses them they're watertight and that but if, seeing as I've got the, the tools to build this, it's, um, this makes it just a little bit better. So currently today, we've, I'll put the meter on. I'm getting 19 volts out of the panels, um, which ain't bad. I've checked in every individual panel. Every panel's giving me 19 volts. And if you look up in the clouds, there's not a bit of sunshine today. So we're doing not bad really for um, a cloudy day. All I've got left to do now is put a couple more brackets over here in um, to connect this bar up um, and that's the roof all done. Right, so internally um, I've got the MPPT connected up for the Victron. So I'm using 16mm cables um, which run directly under the floor to the um, battery which is on the left hand side. I'm bypassing the EBL because there's no reason to go for the EBL and it just makes it more neater knowing everything that um, I'm connecting up is my work. Um, the switch over here, it is a 240 volt um, MCBs. This is not for um, any sort of protection. It's not current protection or anything. This is purely for a double pole isolation. If I operate this switch down, um, there's a pin to connect them both together. That isolates the panels on the roof from the controller. So it's just for maintenance purposes you can isolate the system if you need to work on it at all. Um, it's fine to do this, but I wouldn't. you can't use these as a DC protection because they're not designed for DC and um, they can't take the arc on a DC. And these are rated, I think that's 30 odd amps on these. So they're, not, um, they're nowhere near um, anything for protection. It's just purely isolation. And that's like I say, that's my solar coming in. Um, coming out of here will be at maximum if it can get to 30 amps i shouldn't think it can because the panels are only giving 6 12 18 i think it's about 8 20, 18 maybe 20 amps max out at the, out the um, top so um we're dropping the voltage drop um i'm not sure what this can actually get on that because i'm not maxed out on the solar on this um but i have got a 20 amp midi fuse here um so this is the one that goes out to the battery and again because this is giving out um could be in the region of 15 amps up to 30 if it can get it um i shouldn't think it'll worry about giving 30 and then blowing a the fuse we'll see what, how it goes if it does i'll upgrade the fuse but you do need some sort of protection because if this cable did short out underneath this floor for any reason um the cable will take the current but the device might not and you might end up shorting out your device um, and you also have the same issue that the um cables connected to your battery system so um it will blow your 40 amp fuse so instead of that hopefully it'll blow this one either way um, either way you should have some sort of protection coming out of this so to protect this so that's my midi fuse done and on and that's basically it under here i know i rabbit on a lot but basically all uh, right just one more thing that i'll mention um not really to do the solar but um if anyone watched my b2b connections i originally put one of these in in the battery compartment it's the engine starter battery as a protection 
got the cable going from this battery through to the um, Victron, Victron Orion B2B. Um, but I've read a lot of information about these and uh, a lot of people saying that these aren't as um, reliable as you think. So seeing as it, it's a quite an important cable, um, direct cable from battery to battery, um, and I really don't want anything going wrong, I've decided to take this out and I've fitted in a 40 amp mega fuse. There is a spare way um, on these. So you have to disconnect all of this to get to, to put these bolts in, to put this fuse in. Um, and I'll probably buy a few spares of these for when we go away anyway. Um, but this will be, hopefully, a much more safer way of doing it rather than using this. Right, just to give you an idea on the solar, as you can see the panels went up. We're away this weekend. We're running a 12 volt fridge, which is this is here, um, which is on three bars. So, and it's running quite a lot at the moment because it's been quite hot. And this normally pulls about three amps when it's running. Um, we had a bit of TV last night on and lights as well. Um, so we've been using it and the water pump and stuff. So you'd expect the battery to be dropping a bit. And as you can see, we have got really nice sunshine in the UK, which is not bad because it's unusual. So we're getting really good solar and I'll show you in the pan solar app in a minute. And you can see on our meter up here, we're running at 100% on the battery, even with all that's going on. Um, current gain to the battery is 0 0.02, so it's basically fully charged. And we've noticed that um, when the fridge is this, when the battery is being used a bit, we're charging at full weight in the battery and running the fridge at the same time. So the 300 watts of solar up there are doing absolutely excellent today. Right, guys, it's our second morning today with the van um, checking out the solar. I was going to try and get up early enough to show you this before the sun comes up, but last night we were sitting at 92 percent on the battery with the, um, the fridge running all day and stuff um, and I thought I'd get up this morning and see how fast it charged well it's about half past eight now and you see we're now at 99.3 percent so we're charging quite fast um, and we've got 0.4 of an amp going into the batteries now so it's pretty much I would have said on float already that's the voltage yeah voltage at 13.7 so we're float charging already at half past eight um, pretty amazed at how fast these panels are charging the batteries and this is on an AGM I've got lithium coming I don't think I'm ever gonna have to worry about this when it's all set up it'd be something that I'll never have to worry about again right today is very overcast today so I thought I'd just give you a show of the solar with the overcast side of it um, we had the um, everything off last night so we, we went on to bolt it's gone on to absorption now but we've still got the fridge going and the TV's on and some bits and pieces and I've turned the mains off and you can see we're putting 8.2 amps at the moment into, well, not into the batteries, but the van's pulling back, that's charging and the, the run of the fridge. And we're at 14.8 volts, so we're still not on float. Um, this has gone up to 9 amps uh, just a minute ago, so it pulls, it fluctuates depending on what we're running. Um, we've got 18, goes between 18 and 20 volts coming in from the solar panels and about 6 or 7 amps have gone up on the solar panels cables. This just, uh, I'll put a few screenshots up with this um, to show you this so you can see it because I don't know how well this is coming out on the video. Right, so our last day in the solar today because we're moving on. Um, so it's probably not worth showing you the, bay, the gauge because by nine o'clock this morning it's at 100% again. It is extreme sunshine for the UK. We wouldn't normally get this and it'd been, it would have been nice to see it on a cloudy day but then it's also nice to be away in the sun, isn't it? Um, I don't think we're going to have any problems really with 300 watt panels. Maybe when we go more north but then we should have lithium by then. And the fridge has been running as well quite well so we're on 12 volt fridge. So that'd be it for this vlog. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll update you as soon as my lithium turns up from Roma. If you remember, I was, um, if anyone saw my previous vlog, fit the B2B, I'm getting Roma lithium battery that's gonna fit underneath the passenger seat. And it's designed specifically for the VW seats and it should fit under this Adria seat. So we're gonna be fitting that hopefully in July if it turns up. We're still waiting for the supply.